Today we're doing something different. Hello alien face people. I want to talk about my most favorite Dutch movie ever, Loft. A remake of a Belgian thriller about these five friends who share a love together where they cheat on their wives. But one day they find a bloody scene in the loft and a dead girl in their bed. The Belgian version is a very good movie, but I feel like the Dutch movie took the concept and perfected it. I also want to talk about the American Belgium bastard remake and why that movie didn't work especially compared to the Dutch version. I first learned that there was an American version after watching Jeremy John's review of the American version. I got really inspired to make this one because I love Loft and I didn't understand why the American version was so bad, but now I understand. I want to uh, give a little bit of an explanation for two complaints that he had that stood out to me. First, dialogue. So the American dialogue didn't really work because it felt like it was almost literally translated from Flemish to English with the word fuck added a bunch of times. So to answer Jeremy's question, who talks like this? Flemish and Dutch people do. The second complaint he had was that you don't care about these characters. To be honest, you don't. In the Dutch version, you really do. In the American version, you don't care about these characters because the accent are, accents are placed on other things. Here's a quote from the Dutch director Antoinette Beume about the differences between the Dutch version and the Belgian version. So now that that's cleared up, let's move on to comparing the American version to the Dutch version. To understand this video a little bit better, I want to encourage you to watch both movies, but I think you can follow along just fine, because I will explain the plot as we go along. And maybe after that you would want to watch both movies. I'm going to talk about the five leads, the intro, the comedy, the acting, the look, and the finale. But before I forget, huge fucking spoiler warning. If you want to continue, and be spoiled, go ahead. If you don't, stop this video right now. Go rent the movie, I don't care, I don't know. Watch it, buy it, I don't know. And come back to see more, but don't blame me if you're spoiled. Our story begins with our five friends. They're not our friends, but whatever. For the Dutch version, we have Matthias, Bart, Tom, Willem and Robert. And for the American version, we have Vincent, Chris, Philip, Marty and Luke. I'm just gonna call them by their Dutch names because confusion. This will be so confusing if I use both names. So Dutch version. I'm going to start with Matthias aka Vincent. Yeah, this character, he's a sexy silver fox who happens to be an architect. He says all the right things and he is just wow. Matthias is married to Natalie. They have kids together. He seems to have a really great marriage and they seem to be really happy together. But either way, he decides to cheat on his wife like a lot, a lot, a lot. Matthias is likable, but not too likable. He's actually a massive douchebag. He is charming and it's very believable that a lot of women fall for this guy, especially younger women. Daddy issues. For the Dutch remake, he's portrayed by Buddy Atsma. Buddy Atsma is just a great actor. He brings a lot of life to this character, a lot of charm, a lot of likability, but he can be the douchebag if he needs to be. For the American version, he is portrayed by Carl Urban. And my goodness, this guy, he isn't even a silver fox, but I could forgive that if he was really great. But he isn't, he's, he's not charming. He is God, he is not charming. I would never believe that he would seduce all these women that he does in this movie. It's so not believable because he isn't that charming. And he isn't a silver fox. That, that really irks me. Because look, these are the Dutch version and the Belgian version of Vincent. And then we have Carl. More points on that guy later. But let's move on to Bart aka Chris. Bart is a psychiatrist, married with kids. He's the older half-brother of Tom. He's a very serious man and never thinks of cheating on his wife until he meets Anne Marie. He also has the most naive idea of love out of all these guys because he has sex with Anne a couple of times and he immediately wants to leave his wife and children for her. They have sex, that's it. Not really a relationship, but he's so in love with her. And he loves her and she loves him, but how? 
So he wants to leave his whole life behind for a woman he practically knows nothing about and he doesn't even realize she's a prostitute. His idea of love is really warped. Fetja Nijheld was Bart for the Dutch remake and I think this guy is perfect for the role. He He's so sweet. He has this really nice uitstraling. And his comedic timing is like the best. When he said, kijk uit dat je geen balaasontsteking oploopt, I died. I did not expect that whatsoever. That's good writing and great timing. And his seriousness makes everything better. So James Marsden was barred for the American version. And I have to say, I really love James Marsden. Just not for this role. Let me explain. James Marsden is way too smooth for this shit. He doesn't kind of fit the overly serious psychiatrist to me. His interactions with Anne were way too smooth, in my opinion. Anne Marai is like way out of his league. She's Hot. And he's so confident when she flirts with him. I don't feel like that character would do that when I see the Belgian version and the Dutch version. It's, it's weird. It's just weird. He also isn't funny once in this movie and that bothers me a lot because Bart was one of my favorite characters because he was funny. It was really not intentionally funny, but it was funny to me. But James Marston wasn't funny. He's consistently being Prince Charming, trying to be serious, but it doesn't really work. Up next is Tom, the youngest of our friends. Still not our friends. Still kind of hate all those guys. Doesn't matter. He's engaged to Kimmy. She is the daughter of a real estate person. He is rich. That's all you need to know, really. And he's in real estate. That's also important to the story. Tom really loves Kimmy, but his love for cocaine and prostitutes is a little bigger. He is the half-brother of Bart. Same mother, different father. So Tom didn't have much luck with his dad. He was an alcoholic who beat Tom and his younger sister. Tom is now very protective of his sister and that's a really big part in his storyline. So for the actors, Matthias Schoenaert is back to reprise his role as Philip aka Tom for the American version. He also played Tom in the Belgium slash original version. And this guy is just amazing as Tom. He's the saving grace of this movie. I love his craziness and his passion for this role. But there's one thing. What the fuck is wrong with his voice? Did, did he catch that cold Bart was talking about? Other than that, I loved his performance. And for the dirt, we have Marwan Chico Kenzari. And my goodness, this guy is amazing. And he just added a whole nother layer of craziness and charm to this character, which I love. Overall, I just love this character and love the actors who played this character. So that was a big win for me because it was some positivity I got out of watching it awful. American version. Now it's time for Willem slash Marty. Willem is played by Jeroen van Koningsbrugge for the Dutch remake. Next to being like a really good actor, is also a really good comedian. So that's perfect for this role. It's so good. Casting was so important for this movie and they nailed it for the Dutch version. Willem is your typical goofy, kind of offensive friend. We all probably have that friend. Well, I don't because I don't have friends, but you probably do. That is really fun to be around until they get drunk, weird and really offensive. <laughs> I love it. That is pretty much Willem in a nutshell. He is also married to a very lovely lady. For the Dutch version, chemistry those two had was amazing. I, I love the actress who played his wife. I can't remember what her name was. The actress who played his wife. She was fun. I want to be married to her. And still he cheated. You can really see that they really love each other and that he has a lot to lose when he cheats and that it's a really stupid decision because he will lose the love of his life and that's the point Antoinette Bemer was making that the wives had to be fun and you had to like the women they were married to so you know they had a lot to lose. American Willa Willem was played by Eric Stone Toastreet and I mostly know him from Modern Family where he plays Uncle Cameron and I love it, I really do. But. He didn't fit this role at all. I, w I felt like I was watching Uncle Cameron trying to play Willem. He wasn't offensive enough. He wasn't. Willem is supposed to be funny, but really offensive. And I like that. I like it to watch a movie where someone can be offensive. Because that's my humor. I like offensive humor. And yeah, that's my thing. And he wasn't. And it really irked me. To me, he was way too PC. This whole movie was, by the way. This whole movie was way too PC. But more on that later in this video. Everything he did felt a little awkward to me. And Willem is awkward, but in a different way. He's like almost ratting the guys out while he's drunk. That's that kind of awkward. Or how women shouldn't complain about fake boobs because boobs are boobs, damn it. Other than that, no. Just no. We saved craziest for last, Robert or Luke. Robert is weird. 
that that's something you need to know. Robert is really weird. He's married to this really frail woman with diabetes and she's really dependent on him and it's, I don't like the dynamic, but their choice. He is like the mastermind of this whole movie. He is our lead pretty much and our villain and anti-hero and moron all at the same time. And this whole movie kind of revolves around his warped idea of love. And that's kind of a, a theme in this movie, weird ideas of love. Having sex with a prostitute once or twice is enough love to leave your wife and your children. And seeing this hot student thinking she would fall for you because you killed her. Dutch Robert is amazing. He is played by Gijs Naber. I just thought this guy was perfect for this role. Again, casting is so important and they nailed it for the Dutch version. Not so much for the American version. I love all these little hints of sadism and creepiness and craziness he gives us throughout this movie. For example, the moment he has to give insulin to his wife. He like stabs her and it hurts her and in the American version you don't really see it. All in all, he's a lot creepier than Wentworth Miller. I'm sorry, Wentworth, I really like you as an actor, but you're not creepy. Wentworth plays the character a little bit more sensitive, not really crazy. He is crazy, but he doesn't show it really much. He also isn't that much of a sadist. I don't think he's that interesting for most of this movie. Only started to like him at the end because then he got really good all of a sudden. And I was like, couldn't you do that for like the whole movie? That would be great because the movie would be a lot better if Robert was better. Now that we know who the characters are, shall we move on to the amazing intro of this film? Let me paint the picture of the Dutch intro and then I will tell you about the American. We start at the loft and it looks so great. It's I, I love the location they used for it. Then we linger a little bit on a car. Like a jump scare, a body falls on the car. We don't know who it is. It's almost kind of feels like a jump scare, but it, it isn't really because you linger a little too long on the car and you know something will fucking happen. Then we go up, we see a glimpse of the person on the balcony where this body just fell off of. It's all a bit more sudden and a bit more, oh my god, what happened? And we only see a glimpse of the person, so we don't know who it is till the end of the movie. Then we see Matthias's interrogation. Everything is dark and gloomy and paranoia and Ah, craziness. I love the detail that we don't see the officers at first, that we only hear questions from somewhere in the room and that they step into the light. It's also a lot more shorter than the American version for some reason. I don't know why. After a couple of questions and great acting, we go back to the morning when this all happened, aka the most beautiful part of this movie, for the Dutch version at least. For the American version there is no beautiful part. The boat ride over at Eye in Amsterdam. We see Robert, pretty fucking badass, on a little boat on his way to the loft and throughout that scene we see some snippets some teases of a sex scene i believe we see different people having sex in these little teases but i'm not sure because they show a little just a hint and it's a little blurry and i really like that because it keeps it exciting people robert walks into the loft and finds the body of a young woman just lying there and he drops his groceries and it's <gasps> God. I also really love it that he finds her when he's walking down the stairs because then you get a full shot of the horror. Uh, in the American version it looked a little weird because he walked in and the bed was higher up so he couldn't really see and what we saw it looked like she was sleeping. For the American version we start with the falling of the body and I could have really done without the shot where it looks like we as the audience are falling with the body. It's, it reminded me of those 4D rides you have at the amusement parks. I could have really done without that. After that we see the loft and it is not as impressive as the Dutch version because it's just a part of a building that's a little bit, it's all glass. That, first of all, why would you want a loft to be all glass? I, I could imagine that you want to keep it a little bit more private, I don't know. So after that we go to the interrogation of Matthias again and this part is just weird because the interrogation room looks like the waiting room at a goddamn spa. And we sometimes get these really weird, awkward angles like, where it looks like they took a fish eye lens, like the one you clip on your phone, and they placed it on his forehead and you look down. It's so weird, so awkward, and it looks also warm and nice and ugh. It, it's supposed to be scary, I don't know. Also, he's way too calm for the whole situation, in my opinion. Because he's saying the exact same thing as the Dutch version of Matthias, but it's, he's all calm and okay. And you have 
after we had that fiasco, we move on to Robert. And you see Robert, the same awesome music is playing. And he is walking. He is fucking walking. Not a motor, not a cool car. No, he's walking. And it, it's so crazy, the same music, it's almost a metaphor for this goddamn movie. It's a really cool concept, done nothing with. We also have the same sex scenes going through the thingy, but it's not like a tease, it's like pretty long. And you can pretty much see who's having sex with who, uh, but it's a really covered up. We don't, we don't see much boob. In the other, we just saw shots of boobs most of the time. So it's pretty long, the sex scenes. We see a lot. That's not a tease at all, sadly. I like the tease moment thingy, but not here. Not today, bitch. After that, we fi see Robert finding the body of the girl again. And it's so weird because the body, the bed is like up like I, well, i'm not gonna show you the shot side to side but the american version what you see is you see the bed and you see a girl laying in it but you don't really see blood you don't you have no clue if she's dead or not or if she's asleep and still we have rob dropping the groceries and crying a lot and i get the crying but after you actually see that she slit her wrists maybe the comedy in Wow, that was Dutch. Ha! The comedy in the Dutch version is what made the movie for me. That's what made it so interesting and nice to see. I noticed that the comedy in the American version is pretty fucking censored and it sucks. Because we can't say the word fuck. But we can joke about certain things. I personally love dark humor and I think you can joke about anything. Nothing is off limits. As long as it's funny. You, you have to make a good joke. If you make a bad joke in poor taste, nah. But if you, for example, rape jokes, I can appreciate a good rape joke. But it has to be funny. If it's not funny, you're just an offensive bitch for being an offensive bitch. You're not saying anything. So you can understand my frustration when I was watching the American version and my favorite joke was missing. And I'm talking, of course, about the suicide joke. We have pretty much in the beginning of the movie a scene where Bart meets Anne-Marie and they talk about her sister. He was her, he was her uh, psychiatrist, he was helping her. She died. She committed suicide. Watch this clip and read the subtitles. I love this joke. It's really fucking funny. U bent toch Dr. Venneke? Klopt. U heeft mijn zus gekend. Ze heeft therapie bij u gehad. Sophie, Sophie Marai. Het spijt me heel erg wat er met die zus gebeurd is. Ach. Sommige mensen worden nu helemaal ongelukkig geboren. Ik begrijp het niet. Wat er de laatste maanden veel vooruitgang geboekt. Maar die laatste sprong voorwaarts was geen succes. Tien verdiepingen. So that joke was pretty fucking funny. And yeah, we can't have nice things in the American version. People get offended at funny things. People don't realize that you can actually cope with things through comedy when it's done right. I also really noticed that the American version tried to be more sexy instead of and serious instead of just being fucking funny. For example, this part. Can you keep a secret? Our city councilman likes to keep my panties with him at these events in his pocket. It's a turn on for him. The thought of me in a crowd so naked. Only he knows. Why do you let him use you like that? Who says he's using me? Maybe it turns me on. Maybe me telling you about it turns me on even more. catch cold. And here is the Dutch version of that part. Zal ik jou een geheim vertellen? Iets wat echt tussen ons moet blijven. Weet je waar die op kikt? Onze brave wethouder. Hij vindt het opwindend om op gelegenheden zoals deze mijn slipje in zijn broekzak te houden. Zodat hij weet dat als hij naar me kijkt, tussen al die mensen, dat ik niks aan heb onder het jurkje. Zorg maar dat je geen blaasontsteking oploopt. I prefer to get a urinary infection. Okay, so that was the bit about comedy and the lack thereof in the American version and my love for offensive comedy and offensive humor and dark jokes, dark humor. 
I, I love this kind of stuff and I really prefer it over the need to make everybody happy and please everyone and not offend everyone or not offend anyone. I don't care if you're offended. I care if I can laugh. So let's talk about acting. I'm not a very good actress, but that doesn't matter. I can still critique other people. The acting in the American version wasn't that bad. To be honest, it wasn't that bad. It was just really fucking boring. They tried. One person really, really tried. That was Ma Wentworth Miller. And in the end, I mean the end of the movie, he did, kind of did a good job. But the rest, <laughs> but there was one person, one lady that really stood out to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The girl who plays Sarah in the American version. Sarah is this really exciting, fun, lovely lady that every guy wants to get with. Even I want to get I want to get with every lady, so I should shut up. She's very beautiful, very seductive, very fun, very energetic. You, you just like her instantly. And she's gorgeous. Every guy has in this movie falls for this girl. But the American version? Oh yeah, yeah. She was pretty, nothing more. She's just like the rest of this movie. Boring. For someone like me, who really loves the character of Sarah, it's really infuriating. I can't really say much more about the acting in this movie because it's so boring it shouldn't be called acting. So the look of this movie guys, Oy. everything looked way too nice, way too warm and nice and fuzzy. Like, were you guys forgetting that you were making a thriller? I, th I feel like you're supposed to feel on edge on some of the, at some points in this movie. But even the interrogation room looks like a luxurious spa. Everything is all warm browns, pastels, beiges, warm orange glows. Also, was the camera, camera guy drunk for some points of this movie? Because I felt really seasick from time to time. And there are some points in that movie where that works. For example, the part where Tom kills Sarah, the part where, what's his face, Matthias is drugged by his friends and he's starting to feel dizzy and fall to the ground. That's our perfect moments to use a little bit of shake in your camera. But I felt seasick. It's terrible. Don't do that. Also, the sex tapes. The sex tapes Robert makes of Matthias and the evidence that Matthias is cheating with his friends' wives, prostitutes and sisters. Th that sucks really for the guys. But the sex tapes sucked more, whoa! In the Dutch version, we have the sex tapes and we see him having sex with Tom's younger sister, also Bart's younger sister, so I don't know why Bart wasn't upset, but I don't know, who is barely 80. And you see it in the sex tape and you see it in the character. She is, the actress looks really young and it's kind of scary and awkward and you feel gross afterwards, after watching that. And that's how you should, you should feel. American version, you can see that she isn't barely 18, she's a teenager and they have really awkward sex. It's so weird because does the guy have a magic dick? I don't know, because on how they have sex, he is banging her lower back. It's really weird. Also, all the ladies were covered up. Like, oh my god, we're having sex. No, don't look at me. That's the nudity also in this movie, in the American period. Dutch version, Hollandse glory. In the American version, it's all covered up and we sometimes see a butt or a nipple. No way. In the America, in the Dutch version, I think we have full frontal nudity, like all the time. Bodies aren't a big deal, people. It's just bodies. But also, also the other times he had sex, for example, with the prostitute Amarai. He has in the American version, he has really loving sex with her. It's really awkward. He's like kissing her a lot. In the America, in the Dutch version, it's a lot more distant, and that speaks to the characters. I think the way they have sex because he has. This, sex with her the same way he has sex with the wife of Willem and that's weird to me there's a difference I feel my biggest complaint about the look of this movie what the fuck happened to Sarah's hair what the hell is this it, it's so thin and it's cut weird and couldn't no, can no one just get this girl a decent weave or a wig I don't know something makes it better it doesn't look very nice it's just so thin like her face and her personality. Seriously, if she looked like that and her personality was amazing, I could forgive it. I could forgive her not being that pretty, but if she was really fun and really um, had loads of personality, then I could believe that a lot of guys would be seduced into cheating on their wives for her. But nah, bitch, no. The only thing I can really think about why they would have sex with her is because she has a vagina, maybe? 
But I don't know for certain because we never see her naked. A whole goddamn movie about sex at least. Oh, I see nobody. We see her naked once, but we only see her butt and it's really awkward and weird. And America, I'm addressing you right now. You can show violence. But we can see this girl's graphic death, but seeing her boob would be too much. Like, what the hell is that? Wow, human body parts are so not suited because think of the children i don't know but seeing someone's nipples is weird but seeing someone being murdered is a-okay -okay, bitch also robert finding her body for the first time it doesn't add up why would she hold a pill bottle and not a bottle of wine or a glass of wine if she overdosed because if she overdosed and you staged it like that she would have needed something to drink it away and the bottle of wine was laying behind her and the glass of wine was laying next to her head and it couldn't be that she had the glass in her hand and dropped her arm because her arm would have fallen forward and who holds a bottle of pills when they commit suicide? she isn't like drinking the pills I didn't. so after all those complaints I want to give the America movie a compliment because I can do shit like that. I really want to give them a compliment on the scene where Tom stages slash kills Sarah because it looks amazing, it just looks great. I think that's mostly because of the actor who plays Tom. He's just a really good actor and he did, ama did an amazing job the first time and he can do it again, bitch. I also kind of really think it's because the cameraman picked a good time to get drunk because those movements really fit the state of mind Tom is in because he's influenced by a hell of a lot of drugs. Yay coke. He probably feels really dizzy and a little disoriented and the camera movements really yeah, copy that. Good job bitches. At last we're at the finale of this movie. I still can't pronounce that word. My English is horrible. I'm Dutch. Forgive me. I really like the idea, idea of the finale because we as the audience kind of think the movie's over. I think the characters think the movie's over. We all feel it, but there are so many unanswered questions and Bart is like one of us and he is looking for those answers for us. So we know they framed, framed, wow. So we know the other four guys framed Matthias for Sarah's murder. What they didn't see coming was default. At the moment that Tom staged everything, Sarah was still alive. They could have called an ambulance and she would have probably lived and Tom killed her. They didn't see that coming, I think. We actually get a little hint that Sarah is still alive when Tom slits her wrists. When you die, your heart isn't pumping blood through your body. So when you slit someone's wrist, who is dead, so no more heartbeat, the blood won't spout out. If you know what I mean, we can... Warning, really graphic images. I'm going to show you the little videos of the slitting of Sarah's wrist. It uh, sprays a little. It, you can see just a little bit. When you're dead, that doesn't happen. When you're dead, it just flows out. And it doesn't pump. It doesn't pulse. Know what I mean? Because of the drugs, her heartbeat would be really low and the blood uh, would still pump, but very slow. So that's why it doesn't spray the fucking wall when he's, uh, he slit her wrists. It's just a little bit. If you have a, had a little bit of biology, you know that. And you're like, oh shit, she's alive. Fuck. That was my reaction when I watched it. I was like, oh no. Who? Shit. Four years of biology weren't for nothing, bitch. But that is all beside the point. Never mind. Let's move on. Uh, one of the officers tells Bart that he's free to go. The officer tells Bart that Matthias is going to be charged with Sarah's murder. They didn't just teach him a lesson. He is going to take the hit for her murder because the sleeping pills didn't kill her. Cutting off the wrist did. And since there are no hesitation marks, it's murder. And their conclusion is if she didn't do it, it's most likely that the guy chained up to her did it. You also see that those bitches didn't stage the suicide properly enough. It's staged like Matthias killed her and tried to make it look like suicide. And yeah, it didn't work because her she couldn't have slit her own wrist when she was already chilled handcuffed to Matthias at the bed. It's unlikely to stay at least. It's not properly staged. They staged it like Matthias killed her and tried to make it look like a suicide. So the detective also tells him that they didn't find a suicide joke. <laughs> Kill me. A suicide note. So that makes it look, look more like murder. Bart is walking out of the police station. On his way out he sees his friends. In the Dutch version he also sees 
Matthias's wife and children. So the people he hurt most with this because those kids are going to be traumatized and not have a good relationship with their dad probably and that's all because of them also because of himself but they helped a lot and that that's one of those accents that Antoinette Boehmer was talking about of showing how much they have to lose by doing what they're doing he realizes that because we saw earlier in the movie that Bart had the suicide joke I can't stop with suicide joke that Bart had the suicide note that he thought Sarah wrote in his coat but it's gone he realized he lost it and he meets up at the loft with Robert. Bart confronts Robert with a suicide note he found in the trash and asks Robert if he killed Sarah because he was in love with Matthias. Side note, everyone in this goddamn movie thinks Robert is in love with Matthias. There is no sign for it. There's no if you really look at it, you know he's in love with Sarah and that's why. Bart also asks him if he killed Sarah because she was in the way of him and Matthias. And he's like, no bitch, I'm in love with Sarah, Matthias was in the way. So he confesses everything, how he was in love with Sarah, not Matthias. How she rejected him and used him as a shoulder to cry on every time Matthias hurt her, her feelings. He was still picking his wife over her and she didn't like that and all that drama. How he drugged her and killed her out of his misguided idea of love so she didn't get sleeping pills herself. Robert drugged her and killed her afterwards with insulin but it didn't kill her. Tom did. Robert wanted Matthias to pay for what he did to his friends, to his family, to Sarah but yeah he fucked up. Uh, then we hear some sirens. Bart called them before he met up with Robert. After the point that we hear the sirens it goes two different ways. In the Dutch version, Robert realizes that he don't want to go to prison or face the consequence of what he did, he would rather die. And he runs to the balcony, tries to jump off, Bart tries to stop him, they get to, into a struggle, Bart falls through the glass wall of the balcony, almost dies, Robert saves him and then jumps. So Robert is dead. Robert is the buddy on the car. In the American version, however, Robert hears the sirens and grabs a knife. Like, what the hell are you doing, bitch? He runs after Bart like, no offense, buddy, but I'm gonna kill you because fuck you. And he leads him to the balcony, screams to jump off. Bart doesn't want to jump off. They get into a struggle. Bart gets the knife. Robert realized he doesn't want to live anymore. Bart is like, no, don't, don't. And Wentworth Miller jumps. He's also the body on the car. You really notice the difference between those two. Jesus, why? You really notice the friendship and the love. Robert and Bart still has have for each other, even after all of this, because Bart doesn't want Robert to jump because he's like, no, dude, no, we're still kind of friends, I guess. And you shouldn't do this. And Robert is, sees his best friend falling through a window, almost to his death saves him and then jumps himself so that moment that he saves him shows you that he still has love for him or friendship and in the american version he just tries to kill him then that's really weird to me because it doesn't have the same effect but never mind we cut to one year later we see willem bart and willem's wife in a bar together willem and his wife are still married bart is divorced also matthias is now divorced we learn bart walks outside sees amarai they talk for a little bit catch up we learn that matthias still lives in the loft because it's the only thing his wife would let him keep after their divorce tom is awaiting trial for the murder of sarah life goes on amarai asks if bart wants to have coffee with her a little bit of coffee that that was the movie bitches so my conclusion to this movie these movies both of them i think this story is a really really great story but it depends on if it's great or not on the storyteller and where this person lays the accent by laying focus on on what's on the line for these guys and raising the stakes you get a much more interesting story and you really get a lot of emotion behind it and you feel for the characters and for example having sarah be an actual fun loving great girl and having lots of character and making her really lovable makes that she isn't just a body in a bed i really feel like the american version really failed to show you a little bit more than just a story it lacked heart it lacked it lacked a lot and i know it's part of the original team and i don't know how you could fuck up so big because the belgium version was really great i really really like the belgium version i really think it also has a little bit to do with because american people are different than belgium or dutch people and to not change it enough for that audience i think that's one of the biggest reasons that it flopped over there but yeah that was the movie my thoughts on it i hope you liked this video there are a lot more videos of me 
coming to you. Maybe you don't watch my channel. Maybe this, uh, this is the only video you'll watch of me because my channel is pretty fucking random and I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Well, I do. I do. I can tell you. You'll get a new little Tokyo Hotel Dream Machine vlog is coming up. Preparation vlog. Also, you're getting a tattoo update in the near future because I want to make this an annual thing where I can update you on what kind of tattoos I got that year and which one hurts more, which one didn't. Also, I want to give you a little bit of advice on how to take care of your tattoos, stuff like that, now that I have 10. Also, you can leave me all your questions about tattoos in the comments or on social media. All my social media is linked down below or over here. What also is coming up, it's so exciting, a vacation vlog. A travel with mirror vlog is coming. I know I didn't do one this year. I hope to see you in those videos. And if I don't, thank you for watching. I see you later. Bye bye.